That last game was crazy. I thought Bethel Cooper was going to get that first win of the season. But all oh, those Hornets kept fighting. Welcome back to the Steam. So I got so hyped about winning last week's game, I decided to take a little break. And I forgot to post the stats. So here they are. The pass game was dead. We only completed two passes the entire game. Justin Chambers and Gene Singleton combined for 518 yards rushing. 518 yards. That's crazy. That was our entire offense the whole game. Justin Chambers had five touchdowns. Gene Singleton had three touchdowns. And Kevin Scott, my goodness, he was absent the entire game. We couldn't get him involved. He didn't make any big plays. He didn't even catch the ball this game. Tim Brown didn't catch the ball this game. Marcus Williams was the only one that caught two passes. He caught two passes. And then look at this. Four drops between the three of them. Roddy Watts played amazing today in this game, though. Roddy Watts was amazing. He had 10 pancakes. He's no doubt going to be in the league soon. I hope so, anyway. Our defense, though, our defense, when they finally decided to play, they woke up, they made big plays. We got two big interceptions. One was a pick six by, um, by I believe it was Blake Rollins. Yeah, it was Blake Rollins. And then we had Cedric McNeil get a critical interception at the end of the at the end of the regulation. Had I went for the extra point instead of going for two at the end of regulation, we wouldn't have went to overtime. The game would have been over. So let's look at the rest of the scores. So there you see, we came back and beat Bethune Cookman. Alabama A&M back to their winning ways, beating Prairie View 24 to 21. UTEP had their way with Mississippi Valley State. Mississippi Valley State didn't look bad though. Arkansas Power Bluff beat Alcorn in overtime. Texas Southern beat FAMU. And then you have the rival game between Southern and Jackson State. Southern comes out victorious. So we had two overtime games in the sweat this weekend. Meanwhile, over at the MIAC, Hampton and Howard in their rivalry game. Hampton victorious over Howard, the battle of the HUs. Morgan State beat Delaware State 31-10. South Carolina State and North Carolina A&T. South Carolina State winning overtime 26-23. Tennessee State beat Norfolk State 34-21. Tennessee State is now 5-3 on the season. So let's go to some recruiting news. So you see Leon Hall, the linebacker from Cali, he wants to make his official visit. So we're going to bring him out here for the Mississippi Valley State game next week. Ryan Thompson, he still has us third behind Colorado and LSU. We're no longer pursuing Joe Moore. He has us at the bottom now. Garrett Harvey has us in first place still on his list. Look at that. Look at our ball. We're well ahead of everybody else. Ron Lawson has us up top as well as Trey Tyler, the quarterback from Florida. So as you can see now, we don't have any Heisman candidates on this list, but it still looks like a good group of players though, especially Zach Caldwell and Gurry. Those was two quarterbacks. There goes Amal McCray, the uh, Penn State running back, and then you have Nick Hawkins, the quarterback for South Carolina. So Justin Chambers is named National Offensive Player of the Week, and how could he not be? 335 yards rushing on 22 carries, along with five touchdowns. He balled out. Him and Gene Singleton balled out. Was slowly becoming running back you. Brian Patton, look at that. 15 tackles, two for loss, a sack, an interception, and a force fumble for Defensive National Player of the Week. And then look at the MEAC. Look at Cody Lee and Josh Williamson. Cody Lee had a great game. Williamson did too. They balled out. So let's look at the standings real quick. So Arkansas Pine Bluff is now in first place in the SWAC. Wow, that's shocking right there. We go over to the West. You're going to see the Wood 3 0 in conference play now and 5 1. Look at Southern though. That was a big win over Alabama AM this past weekend. So we're going to have to look out for them. So join us next time we got this fake rivalry game. I don't know why EA Sports thinks that this is a rivalry game. Because if you know HBCU football, this is not. But anyway, those cats from Ida being in Mississippi coming to town. The Mississippi Valley State Delta Devils. You know, Jerry Rice is on my model. We're looking forward to seeing them.
We're looking forward to beating them pretty good too, hopefully. We're hoping to see y'all there. Peace.